your Bibles. Uh, go ahead and pull those out. If you get on the app too, you can follow along. But we're in our series, The Gates of Hell, and we're learning how to take our stand against the devil's schemes. And so if you didn't watch last week, go watch it. It was so, so powerful. And our whole uh, scripture that we're building this whole message series on is Ephesians 6, 11 through 12, where it says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Now, throughout this whole series, it's important that we understand that we take these principles and they're they're really not person to person in our relationships. It really is more of how we can take the word of God and stand against the devil and his schemes when he attacks us through lies so that we'll believe his lies. And I wanna demystify the devil because he's under our feet. Jesus is king, Jesus is Lord, he is on the throne today. And I want everyone to understand their authority that's been given to them through Jesus. So you don't have to fear the devil, you don't have to fear demonic activity. In fact, you were called to run into that darkness and bring the light that lies within you. So I want us to go to God's word and take these principles and apply. And there may be some areas that we apply these principles in the physical realm, but for the most part, it's gonna equip us on how to operate in spiritual warfare. The enemy is attacking the church right now. And there are so many lies, even within the church and believers, they're believing the lies of the enemy. And so, Going off of the cliffhanger from last week, 2 Corinthians 2.11, Jeremiah shared this. In order that Satan might not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Be encouraged today, saints, because God has left us with equipping so that we don't walk outwitted and that we don't fall for the devil's schemes. We are aware He gives us eyes to see. Oh, that's Satan working right there. Okay, that's demonic activity right there. Listen, I believe that God is equipping his church right now for such a time as this because the days are so dark and you don't have to get discouraged because Jesus is coming back. So walk in that power, walk in that boldness, walk in that joy and his truth and know that he's gonna use you in a powerful way. One thing that I've realized is that Satan one of his main schemes is deception. His very first interaction that he had with man was deceiving. Our main text is Genesis 3, verses one through five, if you have your Bibles. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So if you've not read the scripture, I would encourage you to go read the whole text, but for the sake of time, I'm gonna summarize. They both partake in the fruit that God commanded them not to eat and their eyes were open, they sewed fig leaves to cover themselves, and then God comes and finds them and asks them, what have you done? And here's what Adam says in verse 12. The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. He went real quick from wow to let me throw you under the bus. (laughs) Verse 13, then the Lord said to the woman, "What what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. One of the biggest takeaways I get from this passage is the enemy is constantly trying to pull us away from the father, but the father is constantly trying to bring us back to himself. Okay, so that's how you can distinguish the voices. I've entitled today's message, Trafficking Truth. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you that today we have your truth to study. 
And God, I pray that you would give the church courage and boldness to be people that bring truth into the world, that we would stand on the side of truth, we would stand on the side of courage, even if everyone else walks away. And God, I pray that if there's any areas of deception in our lives, would you reveal that to us during our time in the word? And would you give us humble spirits to repent, confess, and be forgiven? We love you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I know the word trafficking is a very negative word, but in today's society, when it comes to truth, that's how it is. You have to sneak it around because truth is unpopular. Truth is scarce. And truth is even attacked at times. And if you decide to make the decision, I'm gonna be a truth trafficker, just expect just opposition, expect to be unpopular, expect to be misunderstood because people don't want truth. But us as your leadership over this specific body, we are committed to bringing the truth every single week. Even if it goes against society, even if it goes against the majority, we're willing because one day we will all stand before Jesus and I wanna be on the right side. I don't wanna be right, I wanna be on the right side. There's too many people that wanna be right about their circumstances and about their viewpoints. That's a shallow place to be. I wanna be on the right side, the side of truth, the side of love, and the side of Jesus. One of the things that Jeremiah and I, we were talking about our pet peeve is have you ever gotten junk mail that the front of the envelope it looks like it's handwritten. And we opened it last week and we opened it up and we realized it was just an offer. But they had tricked us and they were so crafty at that envelope, it looked authentic that we opened it up and we felt deceived, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, you got us. Can I tell you that's how crafty the enemy is? Oh, he tailors his deception. He tailors his lie to each of us and it looks so authentic and real, and there's so many believers opening up his envelope. They're just opening it up, they're reading it and taking it as face value and be like, oh, that must be true. And it's lies, lies, lies. And we as the church, I'm really speaking to the church today. We have got to know the word and the truth of God so that we can see and discern the lies of the enemy in these last days. Listen to this quote by Russell Johnson. It says, the greatest threat to the church is not unbelievers. It's Christians who have been more discipled by culture than by Christ. And I've seen that frequently in these last days. A lot of believers, they're, they're just being discipled by culture. They're not living according to the commands of Jesus. They're living to what the majority is doing. And I'm saying it takes courage to pluck yourself out of that mind and that lifestyle and say, no, I'm gonna stand in truth. I wanna read to you uh, Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 because the deception is so deep and it's so dark. And I want, what I wanna do is I wanna encourage you <laughs> to fear the Lord, <laughs> okay? Because the fear of the Lord is what's gonna keep us in obedience to the word rather than to complying what the world is doing. So Proverbs 6, 16 through 19 says, there are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, which is pride, a know-it-all spirit, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. And that really stood, stood out to me, the last one, that God decided to include someone who stirs up conflict with someone who sheds innocent blood. And so I wanna say that because I wanna encourage you, be careful about how often you're with someone who just stirs stuff up. They just stir it up, then they leave the pot. And it's just like, oh, you know, they did not offer any help. They did not offer any solutions. They just said, there's, this, there's problems, stirring it up. And listen, avoid those people as much as you can. But listen to Proverbs 24, 25. It says, but those who rebuke the wicked will have delight and a good blessing will come upon them. 
This is so good because we are called to rebuke the wicked. When there is wickedness going on in the world, we are called to rebuke it, not to judge, but to rebuke, saying, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through him. And we share that with courage, and guess what happens when we do that? That's the kind of church this is gonna be. We're gonna call out wickedness in this world. We're not gonna be okay with it. We're not gonna go along with it. We're not gonna be like, oh, well, that's what they said. You know, that's what they said on TV. I don't care what they said on TV. Please don't quote the TV to me. You can quote the scripture to me. Don't quote the TV to me. Let me, let me stop. Let me just. I'm about to show you a video and it, it, it's dark and it's, it's quite disturbing. Um, just at the level of deception. And I'll give you some reference. In this video, uh, there is a courageous male on a college campus who is trying to traffic truth about the subject of abortion. Now, if you've ever had an abortion, I just wanna speak to you right now. If you've asked God to forgive you, you're forgiven because I know the enemy, he's sneaky, and you've already, you've been forgiven, but he comes up and he wants to add shame. Listen, you can't change the past. That's why I love God, because he's a redeemer. He's a redeemer. But that doesn't mean that we aren't gonna have the courage to speak truth on subjects of wickedness. That's what abortion is. And you know, abortion's not new, by the way. It happened in the Bible. When the enemy, see, that's how, you know, the enemy recycles his tricks. He is not creative. He recycles the same thing. He is not original either. All he knows how to do is take God's amazing creativity and twist it and pervert it. That's all he can do. He is not an original. And so abortion happened all throughout the Bible by trying to kill the firstborn, take them out before they grow up and change the world. But he's speaking truth on the subject And here's where the deception is. There are girls mocking him for it. Take a look. That's what's being taught right now. They're coming after our kids and they're indoctrinating our kids. Think about how deep that deception is, is that that female said that she would kill her baby. She didn't even say a clump of cells. She didn't say a fetus. She actually said the word baby and that she thinks that murder is okay. They're packaging abortion as women's health care. And I wanna, I wanna go to the scriptures because the Bible has a lot to say about the value of a human life. And this is what God says. Psalm 139, 13 says, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. We even sang about it this morning. In my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Hello. Verse 16, this, this is even more proof. Your eyes saw my unformed body All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So before we were even physically conceived, God already knew us. He already had a plan for us. And I'm telling you, abortion is demonic. It is taking out the future leaders. And I I wanna encourage the students to have the courage to have conversations with people because they're teaching. That's why they get to universities and that's why they believe what they believe because they're teaching this. And we have to have the courage to say, no, every life has value. So I want us to talk about three reasons people fall into the enemy's deception so that we are not unaware of his schemes and we don't fall into deception. So if you're taking notes, the first reason is, is they give Satan access. Eve should have never even engaged in conversation with the serpent. The moment he started talking, she should have ran the other direction. But she engaged. Listen, listen to 
how God describes Satan. John 8, says, you belong to your father, the devil, and you wanna carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. I've always heard, if you, how do you know if the devil's lying? His lips are moving. He doesn't, he doesn't even, he's not even capable of speaking truth. He's not even capable. There's no truth in him. He only lies. And so I want to speak really quickly because there's going to be opportunities to engage when the enemy kind of brings something to our doorstep. Don't fall for it. Okay? And I know some of you probably grew up in church. I did not. And so there were some things that I participated in back in the day because I just didn't know. And I want to bring it to light because... If you grew up in church, there's probably a lot of things you weren't allowed to do because it invited demonic activity into your life. And so I wanna go through those. Now, if you've dabbled in any of these things, listen, you don't have to fear. You just have to come to God, confess it, repent, means turn away from that lifestyle, let him wash you, and then invite the Holy Spirit into your life, okay? So there are some things out there that seem spiritual but actually invite demonic activity. Psychic readings. Tarot cards, crystals, that's a big one. New age, it's a big one. Horoscopes, astrology. There's nothing wrong with space. It's just, it shouldn't direct your life. Ouija boards. These are, this is just a handful. We don't have time to go through all of that, but it's important. This is what guides us. This is what leads us. This is what informs us. And listen, there are a lot of spirits out there. There are a lot of spirits out there and you don't want the wrong spirits in your life. If some of you, you might be experiencing torment and fear at night. Listen, just give it to God and say, cleanse me, cleanse my house. Bless me with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Look, in Acts chapter, here's some homework. Acts chapter 16, Paul is there with Silas. They're preaching the gospel, they're doing ministry and there's a girl there with a spirit who can tell the future. So I'm not saying that that stuff isn't real. It's real power. It's just demonic power. And she's, she's following after them and she's like, these are men of God who are telling you to find the way and it's right. Like she's literally saying what they're doing and it's right. And she's doing this for several days and finally Paul gets annoyed enough, which I was kind of confused. I'm like, Paul, don't you care about the girl? Like, come on, wait, several days. He cast the demon out of her and she no longer had that spirit. She couldn't fortune tell. And then there was a whole, just go read it. It's, it's good. Like, listen, movies have nothing on the Bible. But I wanna say that because there are spirits and I want us to be able to distinguish. Second Corinthians eleven three three through four says, it says, but I am afraid that just, and he's talking to believers here, but I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches a Jesus other than the Jesus we preach, or if you receive a different spirit, notice lowercase spirit, from the spirit, capital letter spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. And we've got to guard, church. That's why we've got to be grounded and rooted in the word of God, because there's a lot of spirits out there that are not from God. And so we don't need to dabble in them. Now, there are some not so obvious ways that we give access to Satan. And I wanna talk about that. People give access through what they watch, what they listen to, and what they participate in. Your eyes and ears are portals, okay? And so what we see affects us and it can give the enemy access in our lives and we don't wanna do that. And so that's why we keep encouraging people to turn off the TV. Now, the TV in itself is not inherently evil, but the enemy uses the TV as a tool to feed us fearful things. Whenever I turn on the TV, it's just fear, fear, fear. That's the same message. Fear to die, fear uh, of people, fear of storms. It's just so much fear. And listen, I honestly believe that TV is the, the, the new knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. 
Because we were never meant to carry the knowledge of evil. We weren't, it's too heavy. We were only supposed to walk in the goodness of God. I'm not saying throw out your TV, although if the Lord says throw out your TV, you better throw out your TV, okay? But me and Jeremiah, we we just approach the TV very, very differently. We're very, very intentional and we, we just don't turn it on very often anymore. But it's important because those messages are, are, they're sending is not the position that God's word tells us to stand in. And listen, I said this several weeks ago, be careful about what, what vision is being casted to you. It's tell a vision, tell a vision. Okay, think about that. Why do they call it channels? Why do they call it programs? Satan is literally using the TV to program the minds of people with his messages of fear. And he's channeling it through the TV. It's witchcraft. I'm demystifying, I'm just speaking very clearly about this because a lot of people are like, oh, witches in Salem, and I'm not saying there's anything. I'm saying, no, witchcraft is, can be in our homes every single day if we're not careful. What would happen if no one watched what they call the news? You wouldn't know what's going on you would only be able to interact with the people in your life. What problems would you be unaware of? Okay, so be careful. And that's why I honestly, the, the video games, the video, parents, can I talk to you for a second? Be careful about what video games you let your kids play. If it's, it's normalizing killing, is it normalizing fighting? If you've been struggling with your kid with outbursts of rage or physical things, is there anything that's conditioning them to think that that's normal? Kids cannot handle that responsibility to understand that this is not real. It makes it feel like it's okay. They're still growing, they're still learning. So parents, we've gotta do our job and be real with them. So how do you know if fear is, you're, you're, you're living by fear? you can tell by the way you live. Are you living according to what the TV is telling you to do? Are you living according to what Jesus told us to do? Are we living through his commands? And so scour the scriptures, saints. Know what God's word says. Then when you know what God's word says, then you can go into the world with a biblical view instead of going to the Bible with a worldview. That's how so many people are living. Music. I mean, the music we listen to affects the moods, the lyrics. I mean, it's so important that we pay attention to what we're consuming. That's why praise and worship should be a part of our day every single day. Because it puts our attention on God. It reminds us, God, you are God. I am not. You are worthy. And you are who you say you are. You'll do what you'll say you'll do. That's what praise and worship does. Start your day with that. Sometimes I wake up people in my household because I'm so loud with my praise. Because I know I'm about to face a hard day, I need to start with praise. I need to start with worship. And I promise you, it gives me strength and energy to tackle the day, because I'm in God. And listen, contrary to Satan, God can't lie. So the more we reiterate God's truth, God's truth, it will help us walk in that. Number two, the reason why people fall into the enemy's deception is they are not rooted in God's word. Just going off of what we had said before. Listen to this. There are so many lies out there that go against the Bible and without understanding God's truth, we will be deceived and fall away from the faith. It's so important. I'm, I'm speaking to the church, not unbelievers. Those girls, they have to answer to God, okay? And we will, our message to them is God loves you, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But to the church, we need to know God's truth so that we can recognize a lie when it comes our way. Okay, it's like, oh, that's a lie. That's not of God's word. So that, and we have to be rooted. Otherwise, we'll fall away from the faith. The enemy is always trying to cause doubt and disbelief in the believer. That's what he did with Eve. Did God really say that? Planted a seed of doubt. If we will doubt God, then we will disobey God. And we've got to be careful that we are obeying what Jesus left us to do. Preach the gospel, make disciples, lay hands on the sick and pray and believe that they'll be well. 
and remain in the vine. And too many people are not living that way. So many people think that disobedience is someone who is promiscuous or addicted. And yes, those things are sinful, but disobedience is just not obeying Jesus' teaching. It's as simple as that. And so we've gotta come back to him. Ephesians 2, one through two says, as for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of air. Listen, there is a ruler on this earth, that's Satan, and he has limited power and temporary power, but it is power, he is ruling and reigning. And it says, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. Some people have the spirit of disobedience right now. And we've gotta allow the Lord to help us be courageous enough to be like, hey, when I go into the school, I'm gonna lay hands on the sick. That's it right there. I'm gonna preach the gospel to those who I know um, and who God allows to come through my path. I wanna look at the word crafty. Crafty, it describes Satan. It says prudent, showing a capacity for understanding. And so Satan, he is aware of God's truth and God's word. He knows it and he hates it. So he has a capacity of understanding, but then he twists it for his purposes. And he's so sneaky. Listen, the enemy takes some of God's truth and twists it so that those who are not rooted in the word will be deceived and fall away from the faith. Are you hearing the pattern here? He just wants us to fall away from the faith and so we have to be rooted in the word. Did you ever wonder why Satan didn't talk to the man? He went to the woman. Listen, men are, God gave the man the command and men are logical. They're like, boom, 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 here it is, straightforward. Women, we're the talkers, right? We could just sit and do nothing and talk for hours and hours and never run out of stuff to talk about, right? And so that's the craftiness of Satan. He knew that the woman will talk and engage and engage in conversation. And he starts with the question. And so women, God has given us spiritual discernment, okay? And we've gotta cultivate that that gift, otherwise it'll lay dormant and will remain in deception. But we've gotta let our spiritual antennas be up so when Satan shows up, we say, no, you're under my feet. I'm not engaging with you. You can't have my family. You can't have my kids. You can't have this church. You can't have me. (laughs) Women, God gave us that. Don't make the mistake of engaging with things that are ungodly. Genesis 2.18, look at how interesting this is. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. And I always thought, thought, read that word suitable as compatible, as helpful, but the word suitable actually means in the Hebrew, before, in front, positioned ahead. Let that sink in. Because women, isn't that true? Like, We usually have step one through three and that'll solve the problem real quick. Just follow the plan. It'll work. We are always 10 steps ahead. That's just the way the Lord made us. But we're not called to be 10 steps ahead in the natural. We're supposed to use that in the spiritual. We go ahead in prayer. We go ahead with the word. We go ahead with encouragement to our husbands. Ladies, build up your husband, build him up, call him up. If he doubts with just a tiny bit that he is not the junk, build him up more. I just want, just go to your husband someday and be like, babe, you're just the junk. You're just, you're, you're, mm. just do it. He should feel like he's amazing in your presence. He needs that. He needs that. And ladies, I wanna help us because we like to do all the things, right? We like to do all the things, but that causes anxiety and pressure that God never gave us, okay? And there are, I wanna encourage you, become who you're supposed to be for your husband. Everybody else is last. The job is last, then comes the ministry, then comes the kids, the husband gets the first, okay? They don't need as much as we, they, we think they need. They don't need a spotless house. They don't need a hot meal three, seven days a week. They need three things from us. 
This is just my experience with my husband. They need a playmate, someone to have fun and go on adventures with. Listen, if they ask you to do something, do it. Even if it scares you, even if it's uncomfortable, even if you're miserable inside, just act happy. They can't tell the difference, okay? (laughs) And they will love it. They're gonna be like, man, she's so much fun. I love being around her. They need a companion, someone to fulfill purpose with. We're doing this together, babe. This is our thing. Let's go. And they need a lover. They need a lover. That, and you're the only one who can do that for your husband. And listen, ladies, I get you. I get you. You've been doing stuff all day. All the things. All your energy's gone physically. And then it's like, wow, chicka, wow, wow. It's so tempting to be like, oh, I have a headache. Listen, ask the Holy Spirit for creativity so it maximizes your energy for your schedule. And I promise the Holy Spirit will give you strategy so that it's convenient for you, okay? So just invite that. Listen, some of you have been praying that your husband would just dote on you and love on you and make you so, and you're so irresistible to him. Just do these three things. You do these three things, you major in these three things, I guarantee you won't be able to keep him off of you, away, around you. He's just gonna want you around all the time. And then if you get to anything else, you get to something else. But these are the majors. Men, I'm gonna talk to you. I wasn't gonna let you out of this. Men, I've been praying for you. I've been specifically praying for men. And my prayer has been that the men would rise up and lead. That's what God has given you to do as the male. Listen, he put you over us as the head and we're called to submit under your leadership. Not that women can't lead, I mean, obviously, okay? But men, you're called to lead. Us women, we want you to lead us. We want you on the front lines. We want you taking initiative. We want you seeing and doing and going. And my prayer's been answered. I've been seeing so many new men on our dream teams just doing the thing and it's amazing to see, but I know that there's more men. With God's calling, listen, just squash insecurity and doubt and self-rejection, squash that stuff that's not of God and rise up and be the men you were called to be. And watch how God blesses you in your household. Lead us, we're ready, we're so ready. And, and lead, lead your household, not just lead in the church, lead your household. Lead in your marriage and lead your children. Lead them, lead them in the way that they should go. Listen, we need more men disciplining their kids. I know that that is unpopular. And there's a, there's a place, there's a place for time out. There's a place for grounding and restriction, but there is just something about a spanking <laughs> that time out can't even do. Restriction can't even do. God's word even said, spare the rod, spoil the child. Men, discipline your kids. And wives, I'm saying this with you, okay? I'm saying this to myself, get out of the way. It's hard, I know, you know don't touch my baby. You know, and the Holy Spirit convicted me because I was just, there's so many times, I'm like, oh, that is, that's too much, you know? And the Holy Spirit said, so you're telling me you're gonna teach your son how to be a man as a woman. <laughs> I know, that's how I felt. I was like, well, just put me in my place, Holy Spirit. And I said, you know, not that I can't teach my son, but there's some things that need to come from the man of the house, the father of the family, and then discipline your kiddos. Otherwise, they'll grow up and they'll add violence to this world, not life. And we've got to teach them while they're young, while they obey. You've got to be strict and you, gotta, and, and you don't have to be harsh. Trust me, discipline comes after love. Discipline without love is abuse. We do not condone abuse. This is love because, and, and, and discipline is love, but it comes after that relationship. So you can do it, I believe in you guys. And then lastly, number three, and we're gonna close, is they do not resist the devil. 
James 4, seven through 10 says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Talking about temptation. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. So I want us to do that right now. If you would, just would you bow your hearts and your heads with me right now? Because I know that maybe the Holy Spirit was speaking to you on an area, whether it's there's a double-minded area, maybe an area of deception, maybe an area of laziness and the Holy Spirit's calling you up to that next level. And that's why it says, submit yourselves to God. Humble yourselves before the Lord. And so if that's you, right where you're at, if you're saying, if you're, you're noticing that God is speaking to you right now and he's convicting you, just give that over to God. Confess it right now, right where you're at. That's the beauty of personal relationship with Jesus is that all of us can interact with the Father at the exact same time and he hears all of us. So right where you're at, just give it to him. Just be honest with him, confess it and let him wash you. There's nothing like God washing your heart, washing your hands. God, I thank you. We give you this moment. And I wanna just pray for those that maybe you don't have a relationship with the Lord. You need to get right with God today. He sent his one and only son to die for your sins so you didn't have to. And Jesus rose again on the third day. He sits at the right hand of the father. And the father loves you so much. That's why he did that for you. So if you're here today and you're saying, Bianca, I wanna get right with God. I wanna give my life over to him. On the count of three, just slip up your hand so I know who I'm praying for. And then we're gonna pray. One, two, three. Amen, amen. Thank you, you can slip it up and slip it down. Thank you, amen, thank you. Hallelujah, thank you, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those that raised their hands. I want everybody to pray this together. Can we just encourage those who just slipped up their hands or getting right with the Lord right now and we're gonna rejoice with our brothers and sisters. And so I want everyone to pray this. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I confess it to you. I turn away from that life and I follow after you. I receive your love today. I receive your acceptance. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, church, let's just give him praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. You are faithful, God. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me today? Thank you so much for being here. If you need prayer, our prayer team is coming to the front. We would love to pray with you.